All right, let's get started. Sorry for our tardiness. All right, welcome to the April work session, Jen. Thank you. All right, first thing on the agenda, student comments. All the wonderful things going on. Yep. Thank you. Tonight I'll be reporting about the latest happenings in the high school student body. I'll begin with one of my favorite after school activities, the Quiz Bowl team that I'm actively involved with. Last week we competed at the CCIU building um, and we competed against Conestoga High School and Unionville High School and we beat out both teams in a very competitive and heated overtime match and we'll be competing at the state level in Harrisburg on April 28th at the Capitol building. So the team is really excited. A lot of the effort goes to, of course, the high school um, coaches, Mr. McCauley, and our administration. Special shout out to Dr. Speaker Polabinski and Mr. Flick for coming out and supporting us last week. Additionally, two, uh, two Thursdays ago, the business personal finance classes traveled to Manhattan, specifically the World Trade Center and the World Financial Center. Um, it was a great experience for them. I saw a lot of the photos. They seemed to have had a great time. It was a way for them to see real life application of the information and content that they were learning in their classes. And perhaps some of the students will actually be in those centers in, in a decade or so. So maybe their dreams and aspirations will come true. Additionally, the sophomore class held its annual volleyball tournament and I heard it was very successful. A lot of teams competed and it was a great turnout for, uh, for the sophomore class, which would, where the proceeds would go for the proms and other student activities. Um, also, students bid their final goodbyes to their Denmark partners last week, and the Denmark exchange for the 2016-2017 school year officially came to an end after a whole year of preparation. Um, I know it was a heartbreaking goodbye and farewell for a lot of the students, but I know that they often go back and visit one way or the other. Either the Denmark students come back to America for a few days, or they go, or the American students go. So I'm sure the friendships will actually never end. Um, the spring music or the spring our uh, Great Valley Drama Guild held its uh, show last this past weekend. Um, how to succeed in business without really trying. It was a phenomenal event. I really enjoyed a lot of the musical talent that the student body possesses, and of course the theatrical skills. Um, I hope a lot of the community was able to attend. I know there were great turnouts for all four shows. I believe that were across the four days. Um, additionally, the mock crash will be coming up, and it will be held at the high school in, in the, at the front entrance, and it's a great way for students to see the negative effects of distracted driving, whether it's under alcohol consumption, texting while driving, or any other use of devices or distractions. And lastly, uh, students involved with the Future Business Leaders of America Club are currently competing at Hershey right now. Um, they're there for three days, and they compete in various events from marketing to agribusiness to communications. And it's basically, depending on which event they're competing in, it's um, an hour-long test, and sometimes there are presentations involved. And it's really a great way for students to hone in on their business um, and interpersonal skills, even if they're choosing to not necessarily go in, the, in those respective fields. It's a good way to kind of shape their character and mold them into young professionals. And a lot of the students are seeking to qualify for the national competition, which is held in June, and the location changes every year across the country. So I guess at the next board meeting, I'll be reporting updates on how many students qualified, because we always have a great number. And that concludes my report. Thank you. And next week's spring break, so take the week off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. All right, program. Uh-oh. We have been working on a homework committee, and I want to really thank Dr. O'Toole, who has gotten a lot of the research together and put together the homework committee update, which will drive a lot of decisions moving forward, not only with homework, we're starting with that, but then we'll also inform grading practices and report card um, practices, and much work to do, and I'm thrilled to have Stephen presenting to us the work that was done this past few weeks. Thank you. On March 21st, we had about 38 individuals representing different levels within the organization. We had uh, elementary, middle school, high school teachers, administration from uh, various levels, as well as three parents uh, join us to 
begin, what we're looking at is a, a focus on best practices, dot, dot, dot. So right th uh, this year will be the best practices in homework uh, and setting guidelines and, and working together to, to identify how best to provide students with homework assignments. And then in the future, in the next num number of years, as Dr. Speaker Paul Binsky shared, looking at having best practices in uh, uh, classroom assignments and then also grades and then reporting grades, looking at report card and things to that effect. So we are doing a deep dive into what are the best practices, what does the research say about those uh, factors. So our first foray into this really was homework, starting to just take a, a closer look at homework practices. And we know of an other districts around the area that are also doing the same thing. So. The primary purpose of the committee, and I'll just read from sort of our, our mission statement as a, as a committee, is to maximize learning and improve student well-being well by examining research and best practice with the goal of developing K-12 homework guidelines that are relevant, meaningful, and consistent. So we started with that as our base. And so the team got together, um, spent the entire day uh, reviewing our current practices because um, much of what we do is grounded in good research and best practices, but we just have to identify it and look at it and see it. And then examining what is uh, current research and best practices, that's a compilation over the years of meta-analysis around homework. Uh, and so the team really uh, spent time looking at, and in some respects, challenging their own thoughts around the topic and just talking uh, amongst each other around how to delve into this topic. And then uh, we started to talk about that Obviously, the team in and itself is not the only um, uh, isn't the only group that can consider this. Also, getting data and information from other stakeholders, such as parents, teachers, and students. So they started to look at uh, existing surveys that have been done around this topic and refining them and and being able to um, make them our own. So they started to delve into that and then talk about how do we start to communicate the work around this, not only with teachers but with parents. And so I'm. Uh, taking a step now just to just sh this is part of part one of our communication which will continue to expand over the next few months uh, in the sense of just sharing the work that's that we've done so right now we've really just spent the time delving into the topic examining that uh, and then identifying ways to gather more information so uh, we developed a draft of the survey that was sent out to the committee actually today uh, that the, of the three surveys so n we haven't released any of the surveys yet but we will over the, after um, spring break into late April early May once we refine it and, and get to a point where we're ready and comfortable as a committee to move forward gather that information and then on May 30th, the team is reconvening, the same individuals are coming out again, reconvening on May 30th to really take a look at the information that we gather from uh, various individuals, various stakeholders within uh, the group. And then um, the work will be to, at the end of May 30th, to have those K-12 uh, guidelines set and, and shared. Uh, and so we'll have further updates as we move along. But right now, this is sort of where we are at this point in time. No PowerPoint tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. O'Toole. And the three stakeholder groups um, that uh, Dr. O'Toole's committee will be working with will be the teacher survey, the student survey, and the parent survey. And I have to say, um, great job in putting that together, and I look forward to getting the feedback. One of the things that, as Joshita had shared, with the amazing things our students are doing, they really have a great handle on, and it was, I can't say how proud I was to see that level of competition. It was just one glimpse. So last week was a stellar week for Great Valley um, students, and I'm thrilled this will only enhance that even further to make our systems and programs more consistent. So thank you. And I want to say thank you, because I know this is a long time coming, and you have a lot of work ahead of you in this group. So, uh, But it's much needed, I think, across the board. So drive a little more consistency on what the kids get and everything. So thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, related to the Community Advisory Committee to consider the enrollment boundaries. And the uh, way the committee was set up or the solicitation of members, there are each building as a representative. We have one PKC member and one PTO member or parent, um, I'm sorry, the parent key communicators, which is the PKC group, and then the PTO, which is the parent teacher organization. 
as well as elementary administ administrators, principals, and administrators within the um, district office. Also included in that conversation will be two board members and Ellen and Pat have agreed to be a part of that committee. Our first meeting will be held in June, Wednesday, June 7th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the district office. All right, and just go ahead. Um, I assume that those meetings are not open to the public. My understanding in the past, the last time that was done, they weren't closed to the public. However, they were really for the purpose of having the committee come up with recommendations to be shared with the greater community and board at the end of moving forward to the, the spring of next school year. So I don't believe that the public is prohibited from sitting in the back of the forum. I, I believe the purpose of the meeting may not lend itself. It would not be a public meeting, meaning that there would not be an opportunity for members not on the community advisory council or committee to be a part of that conversation. I think the goal will be all along to have a couple um, report outs as we go along so that nobody's blindsided or whatever as, as we go through the process and get to a final conclusion. And the report outs would be here at the board meeting by either a select group that comes and does it or the, the group as a whole, it doesn't matter. Um, but they, that group can decide how they're gonna do that. But I think that's, that'll be important to make sure everybody's still informed that way. So. All right, the monthly enrollment report numbers are there. Still growing, Chuck? Up 10 more? 60 year to date? 75. All right. Uh, the second reading on uh, up for adoption are all listed under the policy. Steph, do you have any updates on? Sorry, no updates. All those um, under second reading are set for voting. Um, next in two weeks at the next board meeting. I actually just do want to call attention that the dress code is very different than the one that we had. Um, so just be be aware. I would suggest you read it. And um, but this is the second reading, so just want to again flag that it's different. So. All right. Uh, the building use reports there for facilities, nothing under transportation, food services. This is the second in a series of three bids for the uh, piggyback bid that we are, um, that Nicole and food, our food service department is uh, spearheading. Uh, this is for the awarding of the manufacturer's direct pricing for food. This will be uh, combined in with the actual um, food purchase bid, which will be next month. On to finance. Preliminary budget uh, that will be put on for for adoption on April the 17th. Um, so some of our projections I'll just go through. Here's our operating projections. Revenues are down a little bit because uh, we got word that the plan con money, that's our construction reimbursement money, will probably not be available again this year. Uh, uh, um, revenues are down a little bit as we're seeing a little smoothing of the of some of the things. Expenditures are up as we, I'm gonna show you in the next slide, our, our healthcare costs continue to, to stay at a pretty high level for this year compared to our last seven years. Um, this is our kind of most significant budget challenge uh, of this year. You can see our, 
our uh, historical medical costs. It's a per employee per month, so it's not, it's a per subscriber, not a per belly button, as they call it. Um, so there's, this is just on our people that get the, the health care. Uh, we're still spending in excess of about $47,000 more per week than we did last year and the prior couple of years. Last year we had an exceptional year, um, as we talked about in the fall. Um, our reserves uh, st st stay in the same uh, estimate. Uh, not not a whole lot of change. A little bit reduced from last year, from last year. Uh, another slide we show um, every time we do the budget our proposed use of reserves. We continue to to use the the pension reserve to offset um, uh, some of the proposed possible increase. It's a releasing of that committed uh, pension obligation. Variables, the economy is, is a variable. There's a few, a um, couple, um, one major legal suit that, that uh, was heard a couple weeks ago. It's on the assessment of district initiated assessment appeals, uh, the Upper Marion case. Um, so we're waiting to hear the ramification on that. Uh, property tax reform. Um, had the opportunity to attend the PASBO conference a couple la week before last and had quite a lot of sessions on property tax reform. Uh, I see one of the things they're discussing right now is <clears throat> the people that are really wanting property tax elimination, which really is an elimination, but wanting it. Uh, they're now looking at, well, as a possible means of, of enhancing the revenue to support the elimination of property taxes, possibly making pensions taxable now. Pennsylvania is one of the few states that you don't pay tax on your pension. Uh, you pay it, you pay it, uh, you pay a little higher property tax here. That's why. Uh, so they're looking at that as as another option to reduce the the increase in the state income tax that they'd have to do to offset this. Um, my guess is that if they as they talk more and more about it, the people that are on pensions are not going to like that uh, because now it creates a whole new revenue stream for the Department of Revenue. So assessment appeals I talked about, uh, insurance cost. Uh, we just met with our insurance uh, broker last week. We're fortunate that uh, the quotes for next year are about the same as this year, so that's that's good. Special education continues to be a, an area that in, is increasing. Uh, you'll see that in a second. Charter schools, we've Kind of Chuck, before you get past the insurance, what, what's the rate increase? Is it just a, a loose percentage? I mean, can you give us any information well, th on this? This is this. I'm sorry. This would be property casualty insurance. So okay. it's, right now we're looking at a zero rate increase compared to this year, uh, and that's what we have in the budget. Uh, so that's for things like uh, the sinkhole, which wasn't covered, um, the gym, which sort of is covered. We're fighting that right now to try and get a little more covered. Uh, the sewer back up at General Wayne, uh, which we're fighting that. We're trying to get that covered. Uh, but um, So it's about a $300,000 line item for us, um, property casualty insurance. So And that includes our umbrellas and things like that. Uh, and charter schools, as I said, while our enrollment has dipped a little bit this year, our cost has actually gone up because of the way they calculate it. And really that's kind of funneled with the increase in the pension contribution. Uh, quick budget at a glass. glance. As you look, look here, the um, major increases, when you look at the budget, the budget salaries are gonna be about zero right now. Um, and that's mainly because if you jump down to professional services, Special educate or substitute teachers have been moved down to a professional service, and certain amount of our aides are moved down to a or that that um, uh, professional services also. Uh, benefits are our biggest increase, just under two million dollars, with most of that being pension. Special ed is up about a, a, a million dollars uh, total, and that's uh, kind of a trend we've seen over the past few years. Other schools, which is like the tech school. Charter schools, approved private schools is up about 150,000, and transportation is up about 100,000. Uh, 
staffing. I don't know if uh, Dr. At this point, um, as we have seen, the proposal for staffing, we're looking at decreasing, and it was through attrition. We've made a commitment that we would not furlough any teachers as a result of this uh, decision. And we have, as of this point, not seen any retirements um, up to this point in the calendar um, year. So what we are expecting to do is look at making these adjustments with our existing staff and finding a way to reallocate staff through leaves and understanding very transparently that when someone takes a leave for a year, that's just delaying. So it would be the attrition the following year. It would take that place. But that's what we would be looking at doing and um, working very closely with the administration on finding ways that we can do that to maximize benefits to students without impacting negatively the programs. And that's going to be our goal moving forward. We also were able to um, look at the EDRs and we've decreased two of the um, extra duty responsibilities. And the, you'll notice the high school ninth grade football team and the middle school detention. Ninth grade football was difficult each year because due to the numbers, not only in our students, um, our athletes, but in other teams that we would play. So the idea would be to uh, remove that EDR and have our ninth grade football players play up to JV. Um, so the estimated total is up there and that has not changed. I think earlier though we had um, <clears throat> two decreases in the elementary school. Do you not? Or I know the totals the yeah, same. Yeah, as we look, as we study the elementary school numbers, it, it appears that the, the two increase at Charlestown may only be one. Um, so we're kind of hoping that that's the way it comes out. We're going to have to monitor. Those numbers are monitored far into August, as you know. For, yeah, yeah. And just, just to clarify, because we had some confusion last year, the numbers, the number of elementary teachers is based on actual numbers. The budget is based on proposed enrollment numbers. So that confusion created a bit of, of angst last year unnecessarily. We will monitor into the middle of August. Um, we were asked, is there a deadline to make the decision? We would encourage anyone who is enrolling in Great Valley School District to do it sooner rather than later, um, because that's what changes the enrollment actual numbers. And we will modify and adjust as need to be to make sure our classes are within the guidelines. And as we look at where, the, where most of the increases, it's at Katie Markley, which is the biggest school, which fortunately or unfortunately is able to then absorb more students without <coughs> pushing to the next level. There will be some next levels pushed to, but but when you have a school that has already 550 and they go to 600, um, spread across, as long as they're all not in one grade level, um, the impact is, is a little easier than adding 50 to a school with 300. Uh, so I'm gonna fly, kind of fly through the budget because this really hasn't changed um, much, most of our, our budget is staffing and, and debt, uh, support of other schools, transportation, oops, uh, revenues are, are basically about the same. Uh, millage is still at zero. We're not recommending anything, any increase in the, in the, uh, in the millage. The index is two and a half percent. And the budget calendar, we continue to cross things off. So next week, you will have to, two weeks, next week you can be on spring break. Um, next two weeks, you will have on the, the agenda, you see the resolution to approve the preliminary budget, which then must go on display um, until the final budget is approved on, on June the 5th. Uh, we have uh, next week's meeting, we'll have a, an even more abbreviated version of this presentation for the record. Um, we have a May 1st finance, uh, not sure if you want to still have that, that is totally up to you. If you have things you want us to bring back, we'll need to know next week if you want to have that meeting or not. Um, and then May, at the very least, we would talk then May 8th about the, the uh, next 
next month's work session, and then June 5th is the uh, special board meeting, which is before the work session to uh, approve the final budget for 2017-18. All right, anybody got any questions? You're gonna walk us through these other You have in your packet there, you have to approve next week or, or you have to consider approval next week of the intermediate unit budgets and uh, our OCED budget is, is up pretty, pretty substantially um, and that's based on not just our enrollment but it's enrollment of the other schools as they, as if their enrollment goes down and ours goes up, ours would go up <coughs> disproportionately because it's based on a, a blended enrollment. Um, the Core budget is is essentially the same for the uh, intermediate unit, so and that's a really small budget for us. It's uh, about forty two thousand uh, dollars. The occupational ed budget is going from about eight hundred thousand to um, nine hundred and sixty six thousand, uh, and that's the uh, most of those students go to the uh, center for or, or the technical college high school at Pickering. Um, uh, you have our bids for our, these are our regular bids. It's our, our uh, supply bids for art, dental, medical, technology, athletics. Uh, you have in there, um, we are looking to, to make some changes on in, in, in how we monitor our, our inventory of, uh, of not only technology, but everything, and that's the school dude add-on there. You, um, school dudes the process we use for maintenance requisitions for facilities use you would probably see mostly if somebody's using that's kind of what the, the public would see most of but if we have a maintenance requisition pro, uh, program that we also use with them um, the Chesco net renewal Chesco net is our um, internet provider so you have a uh, the renewal of the Chesco net there uh, you have one uh, approve private school agreement for extended school year. Uh, this is the second year we got a donation from the Veltech Associates for um, to the Great Valley High School for thirty thousand dollars. Nice, two years. Uh, the owner of that has kind of pledged that for as long as the company can afford it. So it's. I was happy with one year. Now we got two years. Um, uh, and then you have on there, the last thing is a contract with Fox Rothschild for, as you get prepared for negotiations. Yeah, so this one, make sure everybody on the board's on board. Um, as we had discussed, hiring Fox Rothschild again to uh, facilitate our negotiations uh, with the GVEA next January, um, or this coming January. Um, so as we go through this process, like we did last time, everybody start thinking about um, over the next, month or so what we want to achieve what our goals will be and we'll set those up front and, and work with uh, Jeff again on the same type of process that we did last time when we did this with him so more to come and the monthly reports are there for review Any other, item, any other items? All right, committee report. There was no IU meeting last month, correct? No, there was not. Due to a nice storm and a <laughs> snowstorm. All right, um, the draft agenda there is for next month's meeting, or two weeks meeting, sorry. Uh, meeting in two weeks. And at this point, I will open up the podium for any public comment. If anybody's got any comments, please come to the podium, state your name, residency, and please try to limit your comments to three minutes or less. Thank you.
Bruce Chambers, uh, James Thomas Road in Malvern. I have something I want to give the board, uh, and I'll read the cover letter to that document. Over the past nine months, I have voiced my concerns regarding the cost of the new teacher's contract and the need for a more fiscally responsible budget. I've provided information which has been used by the superintendent to illustrate the high cost of education in Great Valley compared to other districts. However, despite providing many suggestions, the school board has not made fiscally responsible decisions to reduce spending and reduce the property tax burden on our community. In the process of analyzing the spending and budgets of Great Valley, I reviewed the issues regarding the civil lawsuit filed against the Lower Marion School District, and I sought out the former Unionville School Board Director who assisted in that lawsuit. He has assisted me in analysis of the last five years of audited Great Valley budgets and results. The analysis is attached along with the supporting documentation from the financial reports. The analysis of the 2012 the 2016 budgets and actual results show that property taxes were raised, raised revenue of about $6.5 million with projected total deficits of over, of, of 11.5 million. In reality, however, there were no deficits and you collected a surplus of $8.7 million, which represents a budget miscalculation of over $20 million. These deceptive budgets are described in the following statement taken directly from the injunction filed against Lower Marion. This is a quote. Taxpayers and the public should be entitled to expect that governmental units taxing them will not year after year, pursuant to a systemic pattern, present them with projected deficits to justify raising taxes, raise taxes as a consequence, then record actual massive surpluses in the general fund at the end of each fiscal year. Only to transfer transfer these surpluses into other designated accounts so that the source of the funds cannot be readily determined by those not directly involved in the governmental financial affairs. An injunction against this repeated practice by Lower Marion School District is the only appropriate remedy to bring the, this illegal practice to a halt." End quote. Two of your stated district goals are as follows. Number one, the board has a fiduciary responsibility to maximize district resources while providing the best educational opportunities to all students in a fiscally responsible manner. Number two, collaboration and effective communication with the public and school community is critical to the success of the district. And relationships with stakeholders will be fostered at a high level through engagement. You have failed on both counts. I am requesting that the school board review my analysis and take immediate steps to demand honest and transparent budgets from the district and have honest and transparent budget discussions in public. Rather than focusing on yearly deficits that never come to fruition and debating the size of tax increases, you could then have meaningful discussions regarding what's actually needed to fulfill the district's mission, whether that results in a tax decrease or an increase. Rather than continuing the deception and increasing the capital project fund, keeping money tied up in other funds and keeping the land you're not using, you could actually plan what's needed, budget honestly and openly, and use your assets to fulfill the mission of the district. There needs to be effective communication regarding this. While others who have seen my analysis may suggest other remedies, I believe this problem can be solved within the Great Valley community. It will require the school board to drastically change the entire budget process. I am willing to assist the board and the administration in this endeavor. I look forward to a response to this letter and analysis and would welcome any feedback if errors are found in the analysis. I have provided copies of this analysis to residents of the district and will be, and will be providing one to the state representative, Dwayne Milne, who has expressed concerns regarding the high cost of education in Great Valley. Thank you, and I have a copy for everybody. All right, any other public comments? <coughs> All right, seeing none. Um, Actually, before we do move off of this, oh, with regard to um, 
contract negotiations. Are we going to start meeting as a board? I know that you kind of mentioned we need to think about, you know, goals and strategies and things like that, but are we going to start meeting regularly in connection specifically with this issue? And if so, when, when do we, should we expect that to start to take place? Um, um, like we did last time, the answer will be yes. And um, once we get um, Jeff on board next meeting officially, we'll start working with him on dates. Last time we started by having a preliminary meeting in June to kind of lay out some work with him. And then from there, we started meeting to just establish, um, I think, um, maybe once more in the summer and then at the beginning of September to really sit down and discuss you know, holistically what the goals were. I think we ought to all plan on that moving forward. I think until we have official uh, contract with them, we can't start, so. Any other questions on that? Good. All right, the board met in executive session uh, beforehand to discuss some legal and personnel matters. Any other comments for the board? That's it. Thank you very much. See everybody in two weeks. Have a good spring break.